Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. God is truly good. He is good. The choir just messed me all up. <laughs> I told Pastor Daniels, I got the you know, straight up out of this. Y'all just messed me up this morning. Hallelujah. But he's good. He's so good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We lift you up and give you glory this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over us and bringing us to this appointed place at this appointed time. This is the last Sunday in this year, 2018. God, you've been so good to us. Hallelujah, from our early existence until this very present moment. And God, we give you the glory and we give you all of the praise. We know your word is already blessed. But God, we ask that as it goes forth, dear God, that it would do what it is purposed to do. God, open up our hearts and open up our minds. Let us be receptive of what you have to say to us today. It's not our word. Hallelujah. It's not our message. It's yours, dear God. So I decrease as you increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. We just thank God for Pastor and Sister Jones this morning. <laughs> Pastor Thomas, and we just thank God that they asked me to preach the last sermon in the year. You know, that's a blessing for me. Hallelujah. You know, and I just, I'm so grateful, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm already emotional, so I can't, I can't, you know. I'm just glad the Holy Spirit's preaching this because I'm happy this morning. I'm just happy to know that God is good all the time. And all the time, He is good, for He's working it out for our good, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we have to face, he's working it out for our good. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Now get your Bibles, get your Bibles. We're going to turn to Genesis, the 11th chapter. We're not going to be before you long, and we know it's just one service, and we thank God for each and every one of you that came out. My mom always said, what you're doing at the end of the year or at the beginning of the new year is what you're going to be doing all year. <laughs> so this group I have here, I know you're going to be coming to church all year next year. I know that, <laughs> according to my mom. Amen. <laughs> Genesis, the 11th chapter, and um, for just a little bit, the subject that we've chosen is after this, after this, when we look in the book of Genesis, we know that Genesis is the um, book of beginnings. And we know um, the, around the sixth chapter of Genesis, we read about uh, the flood, Noah, and the flood, and how sin had become so rampant in the land that God repented that he had made people. He repented from making people because of their sinful ways. God told Noah that I'm going to destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. Noah preached years telling the people about their sins. But as you know, and as I know, people don't want to hear anything. They don't want you to tell them anything about sin. You know, people say, I made a mistake. Or, you know, or I, I came a little short. They don't want to say that they have sinned. Mm -mm, people, and they don't want you to tell them about their sins. So the people just kept going on doing what they were doing, and they were just having a good time. God kept his word. He brought the flood. And we all know that Noah was the one. He built the ark, and God told him how to build it. 
He gave him all the instructions of what he needed to do. And we know that God saved everyone. You know, everyone was destroyed except Noah and his family, his, Noah's wife and sons and their wives. So we know that everything was destroyed because God is a God of his word. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a promise keeper. He, he, he does not go back on his word. Hallelujah. We may think that we're doing good and we may think that we're living so good that, you know, God favors us from different things, but God keeps his word. And over, you know, after, uh, you know, they had landed, you know the story. You know, they went out and they had to populate it. God told him in, in the ninth chapter of Genesis, in the first verse, he said to go out and replenish the earth, to go out and, and, and replenish with, with people. So that's what they did. And that's bringing us up to the 10th chapter and the last verse that says, these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. So what had happened after the flood, Noah's sons, generations, they made nations. They went about and they made nations over the earth. Bringing us to our text this morning, the 11th chapter, the first verse says, and the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech. Everybody was speaking the same language. Everybody could understand one another. They had one speech and one language. Wouldn't that be good for us? If we understood everyone? You know, when I'm in school and, and we have students and they're talking, they're speaking Spanish. They're speaking Haitian or Creole, whatever it is. And I'm sitting there looking at it like, <laughs> because I don't understand what they're saying. They could be cursing me out. They could be saying all kinds of things about me. And I wouldn't even know it. So wouldn't it be nice to have one language and just one speech? That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be so together, so united that we have one language. And even though we, it may be, you know, different dialects or whatever it is, we have that same language. We're wanting to be, have that same speech. We want to say the same things. Our minds are renewed and our minds have been renewed that we are speaking the same things. We're on one accord. We're all together in one place. Hallelujah, one accord. Hallelujah, that's when God moves. You remember on the day of Pentecost, nothing happened until they got on one accord. Hallelujah, they were on one accord, one mind. They had sat there all that time, all, one to all those days, but nothing happened until they came together. That's the way we have to look at it, church. We want things to happen. We want great things to happen. We want to do great things, but we don't want to be on one accord. One group wants it this way. This group wants it this way, but nobody wants to come together. Nobody wants to come to pray and ask God, hallelujah, to deliver us from division. Yeah, we got to be delivered from that. Uh -huh. We need to be delivered from division. We need to be delivered from separation. We need to be delivered, hallelujah, from disunity. God wants us unified. God's going to move when we get unified. Hallelujah. So the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Now they were in one place and God had already told them to replenish the earth. They kind of wanted to be to, right there together, you know. And it's good sometimes, you know, that when we're all together in one place, 
But when God has told us to go out and do certain things, sometimes we have to leave where we're comfortable, our comfort zone, to take us out what we need to do. But when we come back, you may go out there to do different works, different ministries. We may go out to do different outreach projects. But when we come back, we should be united. We should be bonded together. So they were in a, a, a land and uh, the families had found a spacious and a fruitful place to settle. They looked all around. There was enough space there for them so all their families could be there and they could do what they needed to do. And it was a fruitful place. Some of you have come from many places. You've come from many states. And you wound up here over the Florida and add to y'all. You have come here to settle. You have found a spacious place. You have found a fruitful place. Why not plant your seeds? Hallelujah. Plant your seed where it is. Fruit can come forth. Hallelujah. And it is good soil. You know, you just don't want to plant your seed anyway. You just don't want to plant your seeds all over where it's not fruitful. But it has been determined. And I don't care what you're saying back there. It has been determined that Antioch is a place of fruitfulness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, and they said one to another, go to. They communicated a plan. After they got together, they found out where they were going to be. They found out where they were going to settle. And then they said, it's more to it than just this. Come on, help me somebody. It's more to it than just coming to church on Sunday morning. It's more than just coming in, eating, and then just going out. Hallelujah, it's more than that. Hallelujah, God wants us to come together. He wants us to be united together. Hallelujah, that all of our gifts are being used. All of our gifts are here. Everything that we need is right here. It's in the house. It's in this house. We don't really, shouldn't have to go anywhere else to find out what we need. God has already given it to us and in this house. So when you just come in, listen, and just leave out, hallelujah, you're taken away. You're taken away from what God has given you so that we can all be one body. So they communicate. Verse 3 says, they said one to another. They talked. So when you just come in, go out, some of you all don't even shake the pastor's hand, hit the side door, hit this door, hit the door back there, but the one that's opposite where pastor's standing, go out in the parking lot. You're not even talking to one another. We don't even know one another. When the people found a good land, when they found a place that they could settle, and you found it here, hallelujah, we need to talk one to another. We need to communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. They seem to be excited, hallelujah, and they even encouraged one another. For the verse says, they said one to another, go to. Mm -hmm. Go. It's an action word. Hallelujah. It means we're going to be doing something. It means that we're not complacent and we just haven't rooted and, and, and taken up our tents and put them right down here. That we're going somewhere. Oh, I can't, I can't get a witness. We're going somewhere. We're not just staying here for they said one to another. That meant they were in a group and they were talking about this. They were making a plan and they said, we're going to go. Mm -hmm. I see something. I see something beyond these four walls. I see something beyond my surrounding. I see something more than that's at my house. It's more out there. The world is out there. Hallelujah. Waiting for us. It's a community out there that's waiting for us. 
And they said one to another, go to, mm -hmm, take some action to set yourself towards the work of the ministry. Somebody said, well, what am I going to do? You know, when I go, you know, what am I, what, what am I do? Set yourself up. Obey God's word. Listen to his voice. Let him tell you. Let him lead you. Let him guide you to what you should be doing. And then you know that you're doing the work of the ministry. Now, I'm, I, don't get me wrong. Every time the church is open, you do not have to be here. Sometimes you need to be home praying. Because just because you come here, that doesn't make you fruitful. That doesn't make you productive. Hallelujah. You have to follow the, the Holy Spirit, follow his lead. Hallelujah. And not your own. That's right. Sometimes you need to be praying in the spirit. <laughs> you need to be studying God's word. And he'll start speaking to you, letting you know exactly where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Great things may be brought to pass when we are numerous and in agreement to stir up one another. See, that's what they did. One person didn't say, okay, we discussed that now. I'm going to do this. You don't, you don't, I'm going to be the leader. I don't care what you say. I don't care how you did it. I don't care what you thought about it. I am the one to do it. Mm -mm. They stirred up one another by encouraging one another. They stirred up one another by talking to one another, telling one another, encouraging them about their gifts. Hallelujah. You have gifts I don't have. And I'm, I, I'm the first one to admit, I don't know a lot about a whole lot of stuff. I'm like Pastor Jones. But I know God has put us and he has put you in the midst of this congregation. He has put you here for a purpose and a special plan. Amen. He's done it. He's done it. We should provoke one another to love and to good works. Don't be talking about one another. Don't put each other down. Girl, did you hear the way she sung that song? Oh, Lord. Oh, did you hear Mrs. Terry? She got there was preaching. Oh, she should have sat there. Oh. Provoke one another to love and to good works. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Let us. I like, but <laughs> read it. That I said. He said, go to. Go take some action to to work of the ministry. But let us. <laughs> let us. Not me. Not I. Not you. But let us. The scripture says in, in verse 3, he says, and they said one to another, go to. Let us make brick. Now, remember, when they got to this land, there was, there, they didn't have the resources that they needed um, to do what they wanted to do, the work that they were going to do, to build the tower and, and, and the city. They didn't have the material that they needed. But that did not discourage them. They said, let us make brick. See, when everything don't fall our way and when everything don't go our way and we don't have everything that we need, we get discouraged, go home, sit down and look at TV. Well, I, you know, we ain't got enough money. What you keep asking us? We ain't got enough money. They didn't have anything. They were on this plane. There was no stones. There was no mortal, but they said, let us make bread. They found a way to do it. They found a way to do it. Your ideas, my ideas, your resources, my resources, all together, we can do this. 
We can do whatever we want to do, but we come together. And don't think your gift is less than anybody else. Don't think, oh, but well, she's got that. Oh, you know, he's got that. Oh, he drives this, so they got this. No. Everybody has something to contribute. Everybody. That's the good part of it. That's the good part. Because if I can't do it, then I can't say, well, I'm not going to be a part of it. I can't be a part of it because I didn't do anything. Do your part. <laughs> do your part. He has gifted us all you know, to use what he has given us and not to throw it away. Don't just throw what God has given you away. Hallelujah. He has prepared you to do a work, each and every one of us. Because when we stand before him, you know, you, you can't say, well, I didn't have any money, God, and, 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 and they were doing this, and they, and they were doing I, I, I didn't have it. I didn't. God is not even going to want to hear that because he has already. And when you start to do what you can, when you start to add what you can, look what God is going to do. God is going to add to you. He's not going to let you go and, and, and be out there all alone. He's not going to say, because you are trying to help, that he's going to withhold his blessings. He's going to bless you the more. Watch and see your blessings come forth. Now, I don't know what, we, what, what we've done in 2018, but I know 2018 is just around the corner. I don't believe in making no resolutions and all that kind of stuff, them lies. Because you break them right before the month is over. Don't go out making no lies. Telling lies. He said a liar won't tear in his sight. Don't go out doing that. But pray more. <laughs> Woo. Get in his word more. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, Oh, I didn't finish verse 3. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. I'm from the hood. I didn't say that right. I know I did. <laughs> Somebody was over there correcting me before I even got it out. But you read it and you know what it says. <laughs> I'm right down there from Stephen Street. That's where I grew up. Hallelujah. <laughs> but he said to burn them thoroughly, which means you do a complete job. Yeah, I couldn't keep that out. You got to do a complete job. Don't start something. Come on, pledgers. Don't start it and then fall by the wayside. Keep moving. Keep moving. God is right there to help you. He says when you have to make the work, no matter how you're going to do it, no matter how it's going to come, just do it and do it thoroughly. Do it to completion. Hallelujah. He wants to see that you're not just going to give up on what he's given you to do, that you're going to take it through, hallelujah, to the finish. It's no good if you start a race and you don't finish it. Mm-hmm. Alabama last night, you know. That's my team. Huh? Took it to the end, didn't they? Didn't the Oklahoma fans? Didn't they do it? Didn't they do it? <laughs> to the end, it's not it's starting it and then giving out all that. No, take it to the end. Hallelujah. It says, burn them thoroughly, and they had brick for stone and slime had they from order. So they substituted things and still was going to build. Right. Hallelujah. You might come up and say, well, I can't do that, but I can do this. Yeah, that's, right. that's, what, that's what they're saying. They didn't give up. Right. They didn't become discouraged. They kept on moving. They kept on going. Verse 4 says, and they said, go to. Let us build. <laughs> First, they had a plan of communication. A vision came in there somewhere. A vision came in there somewhere. They had to envision what they were going to do. 
They said that they were going to build a tower and they were going to build a city. Now, when they did that, that's where that vision comes in. And that's why when people say, well, I don't see it, you don't have the vision. If the vision has been cast to you, do you have enough faith to know that you're going to, oh, I don't see it, but I'm, I'm trusting. I got enough faith and confidence in my pastor, in my first lady. I got enough confidence in them that they are seeking God's face. Hallelujah. I ain't got to see everything. I don't have to see everything. But my faith goes beyond that. My faith takes me to places where I just can't see. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. I bought a car. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. But my faith says every month when the bus comes around, I'm going to have the payments. Oh, y'all bought cars. Why y'all acting like y'all? Hallelujah. They said, go to, go to again. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Now, they're building, you, you got to go back to your motive. What was their motive in building this tower and building this city? They said, I wanted to reach heaven. Uh, did they want to be like God? Did they want to uh, think that they could build a tower up to where God was? You know, did they put God in such a box? Hallelujah. We do. And, you know, we say, I know I could trust him for this, but can I really trust him for this? Oh, I trust, we trusted him for the sanctuary of, of the building here, but can we trust him for a life center? Um, Pastor, uh, I don't know about that, Pastor. But you can trust him for some things, but you can't trust him for other things. So their motive was wrong. And, 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 and when they were going up to reach into heaven, he says, they say, the scripture says, and let us make us a name. That's, it. That's where they went wrong, you know. It, it, being together was the good part of it. And that's the part I liked about it, but as I read, and they said, oh, we want to do this to make us a name. We want to be remembered. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this. The payment, everything it takes for the Life Center is in the house. But we got people saying, my name, you, ain't, you ain't call my name, you ain't going to put my name on the building? Right out front there, you know, when, you, when you're going to interest, put my name so everybody that passed by will know I had something to do with it. I put this amount of money in it. It's in the house. The Lord already says in the house. You got to be careful of why you are holding on. You have to be careful of why you're not in agreement. You have to be careful of why you're not releasing what God has already said is going to happen. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. They were driven by this command, and they did cast a vision. They had a desire to build a city and a tower, but their motive What's wrong? Pride. Ambition. A name? Put a name on your own house. You paid for that. Go out there and get you, you know, go, go, go to the sign place. Let everybody know this is your house. You paying for that? Oh, I didn't mean to go. It's the last Sunday, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. God had just told him, 
in the ninth chapter of the first verse, to go out and replenish. And here they're coming against God, saying we're going to build a tower to keep going because we don't want to. We don't want to go nowhere. We don't want to do what God told us to do. We don't want to scatter. We don't want to go over the whole earth. Go ye therefore to all the. We don't want to do that. We don't want to teach nobody. We don't want to go. We don't want to go. Uh uh-uh. uh. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to sit right here in my same seat that I sit in every Sunday. And nobody better not be sitting in it. We ain't going nowhere. Mm-mm. Pastor, you better not ask me to go nowhere. Mm-mm. Verse 5 says, and the Lord came down. See, God sees everything. He know everything about us. He know our down sitting. He know our uprising. He know our thoughts are far off. He know the desires of our heart. He knew what those people were doing. God was just sitting up there. They were just taking them by surprise. They're going to be knocking on heaven's door <laughs> after they built this. <laughs> God said, the fifth verse says, the Lord came down. He came down to see exactly what they were doing. He comes down to see about us. He see about us. He know what we're doing. How, isn't that good news? That we have a God? Uh, like the old folks used to say, sit high and look low, but know all about us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. They were building. Oh, yeah, they were building. They were, doing, they, they were making bricks. They were doing what they needed to do to build this city and this tower. And God came down. He's looking upon us. But God wants to see what we're doing. Amen. He wants to see what we're doing. That's right. That's right. If you're saying, I'm going to wait. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait. Because, you know, some just waiting for the, you know, groundbreaking. Because <laughs> you don't believe nothing. Oh, that. Uh, Pastor Jones, better not get that new truck. We don't, we don't know. We don't know what we don't know what they're doing. Um, put this one back in my pocket. They, they don't be talking about a life center. They don't be talking about. I don't know how long they've been talking about that. You waiting? You waiting just to see something? But God is waiting for you to do something. So Jones, he's waiting for us. He came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And our last verse, verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. God knows when we are divided. We can say with our mouths anything we want to say. Pastor, we for you. Got your back. But I'm glad to know he looks at our heart. (laughs) Because soon as Pastor turned his back, he went, okay, what the Let him get out there by himself. But God knows. He sees our heart. He wants us to do something. He wants us to be busy. The scripture says, he said, to occupy until he comes. Let me keep building. Don't get complacent. Hallelujah. Don't get stuck. We learned that in Greece yet. (laughs) Don't get stuck. Hallelujah. Keep it moving. No matter how you're going to do it. No matter how the Lord speak to you to do it, keep it moving. Keep it moving. But the Lord <laughs> said, behold, the people is one. One language. And when there's one language, 
hallelujah, one speech, there is nothing that will be restrained from them to do that they have imagined to do. So everything we ask God for, we've asked and we've prayed. He knows what, what we want. And there's nothing that he's going to hold back from us once we become one people. And the Lord said the people is one. And when God said they were one, they were one. Hallelujah. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. Build that tower. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. There is nothing impossible for us when we become one, when we're speaking the same language. Nothing. After this, Hallelujah, when the people were there and the flood had gone and they said, after this, we're going to be busy. After this, we're going to build. After this, we're going to make brick. After this, we're going to show the people all around us what we can do. Hallelujah. After this, okay, when we become one and when we speak the same language, when we come together, when we are one accord, when the divisions are all gone, when the separation is gone, after this. Hallelujah, when you have suffered for a little while, hallelujah, after this, you will be strengthened. After you have been sick and your health has failed and, and you just don't know how you're going to get healed, after this, healing is going to come to you. Hallelujah, restoration will come. Deliverance will come. After the addictions and after all of that has come into your life and you have become as one and you have become in agreement with people that are one. After this, the healing takes place. Broken hearts are healed. Relationships come back together. After this, but you have to be as one. You can't be separated. You can't be divided. We have to come as one, knowing that God has already said, done what he said that he's going to do because of this, because we have come together. After this, and, and there will be glory after this. <laughs> there will be victory after this. <laughs> there will be praise after this. After all the hardships, after everything you go through, after you suffer for just a little while, hallelujah, there will be praise after this. Victory comes after this. After all the defeats, after you've been smashed down and hit down, kicked around, after this, hallelujah, comes the victory. After this comes the pickup. God will not leave you out there alone, but after this, there will be joy after this. After you're grieving, there will be joy. Weeping has endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. After the weeping comes the joy. After we suffer just a little while, Scripture says we will be strengthened and established. Hallelujah. After this, there is eternal life. After all of this we're going through, after all of this we have to put up with down here, there is eternal life. Hallelujah. There are streets of gold and there are the 12 gates to the city. There is heaven after this. It is our home for the believers. Our home for the believers. So after we suffer, after we've gone through, we can know that we have eternal life. And we have to know that even after all of this, Jesus is coming back for a church. He's coming back for a church. One body without spot or wrinkle. One body that has come together, that has finally seen it that has finally connected all the dots, that I got to stop, 
hallelujah, thinking about me all the time. And I have to stop saying it's about me. And I have to stop, hallelujah, not being in agreement with people. And if I don't agree with you, then I got to go out and slam and talk about it. We have to stop this. Because until then, after all of that is over, Jesus is coming back for his church. After this, after all of this, hallelujah. But you can't say that if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior. Hallelujah. You can say, after I've done all of this and everything has come up against me and there are better days, 2018 is almost gone. After this, somebody's saying it was a rough year. After another day or so, it's going to be better. But if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you can't see Jesus. You can't be with Jesus. There's somewhere you're going, but it's not heaven. So you have to be able to accept him and know him, have a relationship with him. 2018 leave and pass me by if I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You see the things we've gone through now? You think things getting better or worse? You need a savior. You need someone there. Hallelujah. That when you cry all night long, that he can tell you after the crying is over, it's all right. You need a savior. Let us stand, please. If there's anyone, the invitation is going out. As the deacons come, hallelujah. We only have a few more hours until this year is over and we all may not even see the new year. It's not promised to us. Go ahead and make your plans. Go ahead and do what you say what you're going to do, but it's not promised to us. Today is the day of salvation. Right now, accept the Lord Jesus Christ and know after this, you're in his arms. When we close our eyes, and know folks used to say when our tongue has been glued to the roof of our mouths, we will know that Jesus is right there to receive us. First call, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never done it, you're welcome. Come. Second call, you've been visiting with us. You see that this is fruitful and good soil. You want to be a part of us. You want to bring your gift to us and we can all fellowship together, you can come. If you want prayer, you can come. Or you can stay at your seat. A lot of people say they don't like to come up in front of a whole lot of people, but I wouldn't be ashamed this morning. I would stop all that silly mess. I don't do this and I'm ashamed to do this and I don't, stop it. Leave that right here in 2018. Come, let us reason together. Come, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Hallelujah. Let your petitions and your supplications be made known to God. That's why you can't get healed. Why are you ashamed of him? You profess him. Why are you ashamed of him? He is that awesome God they were singing about. <laughs> he is that great God. Yes, he is. He's our healer this morning. He's our deliverer. Hallelujah. Did anyone come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? Our deacon here has his hand up. Everybody's good. Anybody want to come and join this ministry? Anybody want to come and join us? Okay, everybody's home. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. You saved? Yes. You know it? Yes. Say it like you know it. <laughs> I'm saved. You're not ashamed of him. I'm not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Annie, y'all. We're so glad to have you come. Your gifts are precious to us. On behalf of Pastor Jones and Sister Jones and Pastor Thomas, we give you the right hand of fellowship. You're just coming in to be Anti a part of Antioch. You have just as many rights as those that's been here 50 and 60 years. Do you hear me? <laughs> Don't let nobody run you away. Don't let nobody tell you you just got here. Look at the tears. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother's side. My brother's side. Yes, thank you, Jesus. She wants to be a part of a body, Pastor Jones. Good song. Well, we welcome you. Come on, ladies. She need a big hug. She need a hug and welcome. I need to. She too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I got to get her name. I got to get her name. I got so excited. I get excited when people come to us. Yes. Let, let us get her name first. Jessica. Jessica Russell. All right. All right, Jessica. We love you. We love you, Jessica. Welcome home. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Love up on her as she goes back. You let them love up on her because she, she has tears this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, everyone, do we have anybody else? Hallelujah. We thank God for our sister this morning. Hallelujah. She came. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, dear Father, how you have just shown yourself strong among us. We thank you, dear God, for all of these that have come to the front, not being ashamed, dear God, just coming to the throne of grace, asking you, dear God, hallelujah, to do everything, hallelujah, in their heart, dear God. They're asking you, dear God, to heal and hallelujah, dear God, to set free this morning. Hallelujah, somebody is in bondage this morning that wants to be free. Somebody that is addicted, dear God, that says they're tired. They're tired, God. Somebody is tired of their addictions that they're carrying around. Somebody's tired of their weight, dear God. And they're saying, God, we want you to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, help them that they not go through two, 2019 carrying these burdens, dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we lift them up before you knowing, dear God, that you know all about them. You've already searched them, dear God. You've already known them, dear God. Give them what their heart desire is in the mighty name of Jesus. We play, pray for blessings right now, dear God. Healing comes to us. Salvation, dear God. Somebody didn't come forth, but feel like they're not saved, God. Hallelujah. Touch that heart right now, dear God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it not be too late, dear God. Let them know that you're knocking on their door. Even right now, dear God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we lift up any all before you, dear God. For we know after all of this, dear God, you're going to do just what you said that you're going to do. After we've gone through and after we suffer, dear God, after we come together, dear God, you're going to show us how strong you are, dear God. You're going to bind us together. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be restored, relationships restored, friendships restored, dear God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we just thank you right now. We glorify your holy name. And God help us, dear God, to be able to wait on you. Hallelujah. That even as you tarry, that we will wait on you, dear God. Hallelujah. And occupy until you get back. Oh God, we thank you. We glorify you, God. We give you all the praise and all of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.